Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Thank you all for coming. My name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, and I'm an attorney here at Myrick O'Connell. There are 52 lawyers here at Myrick. There are 17 of us here in Westboro. We're actually the biggest firm in the boroughs and kind of this part of Metro West. Uh, I do nothing but elder law and do, uh, the, and that's, so that's pretty much everything. And, and in the course of that, I found myself being really interested in uh, the Jimmo case because a piece of a, a lot of the folks that I deal with are Alzheimer's people. And the question is, to me, how GMO affects Alzheimer's cases, although GMO really affects a ton of cases. Um, um, and I asked, we asked Sandy to join us, Sandy Cordovi, because she's done a lot of work um, with us uh, on the vineyard and also uh, in, uh, here back in America. Um, uh, Sandy um, was the, um, were you the clinical director? Correct. At, at the VNA in Martha's Vineyard before she left there just to set this business up, um, really to be a geriatric care manager together with one partner down there. So um, just once again, just tell me who's a physical therapist here and who's an OT uh, and who's a social worker? No. no. And who else is here? Else? RNs. RNs, RNs, of course. Well, how silly, RNs. <laughs> right. Okay, so Jimmo versus Sibelius. Everybody knows or everybody has known for a long time uh, that when you plateaued, you couldn't get Medicare. You just knew, right? Uh, it wasn't said any place, but you just knew. Um, and um, that has now changed. Uh, what had happened was it, over the last, um, oh, and by the way, let me just do brief background. So these are my typical clients, Frank and Mary and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Their goal is to stay home. My clients appreciate Peter, Paul, and Mary Jo, you know, they're all, their goal is to stay home, die, and be buried in the backyard, and then eventually to have whatever assets they have remaining divided among those children. Um, it, have you heard that story before? And so the real goal, nobody ever, ever, ever wants to go to a nursing home, right? Uh, and even if they've been, uh, they want to get home as soon as possible. So we try to focus a lot of our attention specifically on them and on trying to develop programs um, that will support that, and it was in that context that when we heard about Jimmo, we said this could potentially be really kind of a game changer. So um, prior to Jimmo, uh, there had been two federal court cases in various in different parts of the United States. In both cases, the plaintiffs, individual plaintiffs, had gone to federal court and had said, you know, um, our, 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 we have not we have been denied treatment, or our treatment has been cut off because it was said that we had plateaued. And that's not what the Medicare standard is. Uh, and, and, and Medicare would defend by saying, oh, there's no plateau standard. That's not anywhere in the regs, right? Try to find it, right? Because it wasn't there. It was just that everybody kind of knew that it was there and the, all of the MACs, all of their contractors were, were taking that position. So in both of those cases, the plaintiffs won in federal district court. And, and CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid, never appealed because they didn't want us a, a, a circuit court case which was going to really apply over a large constituency um, and which was going to force this issue. So finally, this case was brought by a group called the Center for Medicare Advocacy. If you want to learn more about the case, I'll give you the, 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 um, the, uh, the click to my, uh, we have, a, we have a, I do a YouTube channel which will contain this presentation, by the way, and all the presentations that I do. And I also did an interview with the people in Connecticut who did this case, if you want to get some more background to it. So they brought the, they brought the case together with Vermont Legal Aid and a set of national players and, and styled it as a class action suit, basically. Said, we want a case that is going to, if we win or lose, it's going to have national application. So they brought that. CMS brought a motion to dismiss the case saying, Wait, there is no plateau standard. It's not in the regs any place. Um, um, 
the, the Center for Medicare Advocacy was able to demonstrate that in fact, you know, looking at across a whole bunch of cases, that was the, really the standard, even though there was no reg on it. Uh, and so the judge denied the motion to dismiss, and at that point CMS said, ooh, we've got to settle. Uh, and so they decided to settle. The settlement was agreed to by the court in uh, January of last year. It, it became effective in January of this year. Um, and broadly, what the settlement says, in it, CMS says, um, we are simply clarifying what had always been our standard, and our standard is that coverage does not turn on the presence or absence of potential for improvement, but rather on whether skilled care is necessary. So, skilled care can be, can, or services can be necessary if they are either needed to simply maintain the current condition of the person, or they are needed in the event that the person is declining anyway to slow the rate of decline of the patient. In those cases, if skilled care is needed, um, um, uh, Medicare is supposed to be paying. Now, so there are the questions. Is skilled care still needed, right? Uh, is a qualified therapist or nurse needed either to provide the service or to supervise the service or to man kind of to manage the service, right? Uh, and, regard, and the question is, regardless of whether or not anybody is going to be improving. So, in my class, now this really applies in two contexts. It applies to the nursing homes, obviously. Uh, although in the nursing home case, uh, and in all cases, the other uh, uh, rules, the other CMS rules have not changed. So, at home, you still need to be able to show skilled care. You still need to be running under a doctor's order. You need to be doing it in 60-day segments. And the, but the, once again, they could, the doctor can renew them forever. If you're at the nursing home, you're still capped out at 100 days in the nursing home. Uh, even if you really need skilled care after that, Medicare simply isn't going to be paying. So we've done presentations to nursing home administrators, but for you folks, it's really all about the 60-day plans. So you're, you know, you're aware of what those are. These rules haven't changed. You still have to be able to demonstrate that you are homebound. Although, as I'm sure you know, homebound uh, Medicare takes a fairly liberal definite view of homebound. Doesn't mean that they never leave. It means that, it, that leaving involves a, a, a serious physical effort uh, and that they are not doing it regularly. As, as uh, uh, one of my friends at the VNA said, you know, the, the, the guy who was homebound and then I saw him the next week in the Dunkin' Donuts line, you know, that wasn't good, right? So you really have to show that the person is homebound. But once again, as you know, these are renewable forever. Um, now, um, my guess is that when CMS saw this decision, some of their analysts looked at this and said, oh my God, this could cost us a lot of money. Um, and so how do we deal with that? And I think one of the ways that they dealt with this was in addition to the, the regulatory changes to the Medicare um, manuals, uh, constantly referring to the fact that no, there is no standard regarding plateauing or having to get better, right? They also added a number of new sections regarding documentation, making the requirement of documentation much greater, uh, saying that documentation has to be provided by the person who is delivering the service uh, at every visit and that every visit has to describe the reason why the service was, was needed, what happened at the time of the service, and why it is that services are still needed. And they specifically, in the regulations say, uh, or in one of their examples say, they do not want to see in their documentation what they referred to as the standard generalities. For example, we wouldn't want to see patient tolerated treatment well. Doesn't tell them anything as far as they're concerned. Caregiver instructed in medication management, not enough. Once again, you need to be telling why you were there, what you did, why, news, why continuing services are necessary, or continue with POC, continue with plan of care. They were just using those as examples of the kind of standardized language that people had seen before that they don't want to see now, right? Now, oh, Arthur. Yes? Let me just interject because you're talking to a room full of clinicians. So let me just interject very quickly on those points. Patient tolerated treatment well. So many of you in the room are probably sitting there saying, well, then what do I put? And I think nowadays 
we're not really using that all that much anymore. But simply put, a physical therapist or an occupational therapist should talk very briefly. This does not change from being able to write that few words in order to writing paragraphs and paragraphs and sitting up all night with your computer in your lap when your kids need you to help do their homework. Although they, can do, means, that if, they can do that if they want, right? <laughs> You're not prohibited from doing that. What it means, well, they don't want. What it means is that patient tolerated treatment well. What I would put something there is patient was able to walk 30 feet with one, with one short break. Um, I'm not a physical therapist. I don't speak PT. But instead of just putting patient tolerated treatment well, put something small in there that's going to say what happens during your treatment with that patient. 